If you're being overprotective, you will make him a victim, kind of, okay? Because he won't know how to assert himself. In the school, they have to, or they should, I mean, they, their role is to intervene as soon and the, as there's an aggression, okay? Mm. So it's not even waiting till the intimidation. If you teach your child social and emotional competencies, mm. it will help your, it will help the author of the intimidation, it will help the witness, the accolade, and the victim. So it will help all the, the everybody's on, everybody on the scene of the aggression. Hello everyone and welcome to this podcast. This is a co-production between aidesonenfant.com and La Fondation Jeune en Tête. Today we are talking about the subject that's on everybody's lips, intimidation. Mental health challenges. For over 20 years now, La Fondation Jeune en Tête has offered mental health awareness workshops all over Quebec's high schools. La Fondation now offers mental health kits for families, youth, and school staff. Free, simple, and lively scientifically validated content to reduce psychological distress. To find out more, go to fondationjeuneentête.org. I have the pleasure of interviewing Julie Boissonneau, who is a PhD student associated to the Chaire Bien-être à l'école et prévention de la violence and an expert at the Comité québécois pour les jeunes en difficulté de comportement. Julie, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, Julie, I think we need to start by addressing what is intimidation. I know we talk about it often, but I still want us to define it. How would you define it? Yeah, yeah. A lot of has been said on intimidation and many definitions exist on this phenomenon. The fact that we use intimidation to define conflict, aggression, or bullying may be confusing sometimes. But what we need to know is that intimidation happens when there are four of these conditions, okay? First, it's a repetition of the aggression. Second, that it has been lasting for a certain period of time, so it's not a single incident. Third, there has to be an imbalance of power between the author and the victim of the intimidation, whether it's social or physical. And fourth, the victim has to feel distress or fear and doesn't know how to make the aggression stop. Mm. I've been feeling that we've been labeling many situations as intimidation when it might just be a conflict. What's the difference between the two? Well, a conflict is when two people or many people disagree on a subject. And the conflict happens when they have different opinion, different point of view, but they feel free to express themselves uh, and their opinion in it. Okay. The difference is when some someone from the conflict feel that he is being um, not bullied, but yes. Targeted? Act, targeted, yes. Targeted by by someone else. And they, they feel fear and distress and they don't know how to answer. So that could be an aggression. And then aggression leads to intimidation. Well, but conflicts are not always intimidation. And what would be the different types of intimidation? You know, there's the face-to-face -face one, but there are many other ones. Yes, in fact, there. Are, well, you can you can difference two types of aggression. I would say because first of all, you need to difference aggression between intimidation. Aggression happens individually, like one aggression to an toward a person. Okay, it can be direct or indirect, and the repetition of these aggressions makes uh, intimidation. You know. So aggression can be either direct and indirect. Direct aggression is face-to-face, -face, as you said, physical and verbal. It's easier to notice. It's easier to intervene on a face-to-face on -face direct aggression because you see them. You see the, the, the bully yeah. and you see the victim. Whereas you have the more subtle way that is indirect. Indirect can be a social So it can be rumor spreading, it can be ostracizing, it can be also material where you will sabotage someone else's belonging or steal someone else's belonging, and it can be electronic. So it can 
uh, involves your tablet, your phone, your 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 computer, and social media. A teen is sending nudes to someone. Is that a form of intimidation? You would say. Uh, well, sending your nudes, your own nudes, is not a form of intimidation. But if you share someone else's nudes, yeah. yes. Well, and and w what I want to mention here is that in the case of uh, sharing private pictures yeah. on the internet, it can be um, subject to criminal penalties. Acts such as publishing information that damage someone else's reputation or um, uh, acting or making uh, saying words or gesture that will frighten someone else on the internet, yes, you can have criminal penalties. And I think that it's important for parents to be informed of these forms of aggression that can lead to uh, sanctions so that they can teach their child how to behave on the internet and and how to not face these sanctions actually because they they don't they don't erase at 18 years old they don't it does that doesn't go away julie when we use the internet to share something negative about someone does it automatically become intimidation because it might have a big impact Yes, uh, I would say most of the time and generally, yes, because internet is all about the repetition of the content. You know, when you post something or you publish something, a comment or a picture, someone else will look at it and will like it, will share, will, will transfer it forward. So that becomes a repetition of the aggression. And, and then it can so become viral. Yes, and it's so much easier to do it on the internet than it is to do it face to face or with the True people on, like in the school, like just talking, you know, and spreading rumor. So the, there's the repetition of the aggression on the internet, and there's also the permanence of the information mm. that makes it harder for the victim to kind of overcome this this aggression, this intimidation, because you never know that as a victim, you never know when it's going to come up, from who, and from where. So yeah, it's, because it's, people can share it uh, until the end of time, pretty much. So we're under the impression, or at least I am, that intimidation is everywhere. There's a lot of it. Uh, is that just an impression, or is there really much more than there was? I think, well, I would say it's more of an impression because it's all over the place, okay? Mm. On the media, on the net, uh, even people talk more about it because we're more sensitive to intimidation than we used to be, uh, let's say, a few decades bef uh, back. And uh, the fact that we're more sensitive to it makes us more aware of it yeah. as well. Yeah, for but sure. The research that are made uh, on and the level of, uh, I would say, school violence, even, even in Quebec, says that it's either stable or it's it's uh, lower than it used to be. And that's oh. it, that's because all of the programs that, has, uh, that have been installed over the years. Well, I didn't know that. Well, Julie, thank you so much for this. In the next segment together, we will address the different roles in a scene of intimidation. <laughs> 